this video, let's take a look at creating a parametric massing model that we'll import back into our project environment and use during the conceptual design phase. So let's get started. I'm starting from the baseline work drawing that I have given out here in the course. On the ground floor, we now have the line work. Let's go ahead and add the levels that we'll need. So I'm going to start with my levels up here on the create panel. And I'm just going to come in here and create my 15 foot level for level two, three, four, five, and six. We need six levels to be able to complete this massing. I'm going to hit escape. So let's go. just go ahead and extrude the line work from the footprint. I'm going to click on each one of these closed loop forms. Come up here to create form, a solid form. And I'm going to go ahead and type in the heights as we go. Using my temporary dimension, I'm going to click on this 60. I want that to be 30 feet high. My second volume, I'm going to take up another level beyond the first, so we're going to give that 45 feet. And click on this third volume. Come on up to 60 feet. And our highest tower, we're going to create that form at 75 feet. So the conceptual idea is that these programmatic areas are actually going to be stepping up in height as you go along the Part T. And lastly, our spine, I'm going to go ahead and click on that closed loop and extrude that as well to 30 feet, wanting that to be a, a two-story spine along the building. So now we have our extruded forms that we need. Let's go ahead and begin to create the parameters. So each one of these volumes are going to want to have a height parameter. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my top face, which is going to once again bring up that temporary dimension that we manipulated at first. And I'm going to click this symbol to hardline the dimension. I'm just going to drag this a little bit away from the building. Now that we have a hard line parameter, and you'll see that that's actually in black versus the blue that our temporary dimensions appear in, I'm going to select it, come up here to my label, and click Add Parameter. Type Unit A Height. Click OK for that. And I'm going to repeat this process for each one of these volumes. So I'm going to click the top face just to bring my temporary dimension back up. Click the symbol. Drag the dimension away from the building. Highlight it. Come back up to my label and add parameter for unit B height.
now we have a height parameter for each one of our units. Let's go ahead and create one more for the spine. I'm going to select that top face again. Locate where my temporary dimension is. And go ahead and drag that out here. Add the parameter. I'm just going to title this spine height. Now we have a height parameter for each one of these. Just to test them, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to just change the value, change my height for each of these volumes. So for D, I'm going to bring this up to maybe 100 and just click apply and you'll notice my unit D volume height has changed. I'm going to bring that back down to 75. And you would want to repeat the process and make sure each one of your height parameters are in fact working. All right, the last parameter I'm going to create is a width parameter so that in the event that my spine needs to flex, I can actually flex the width on the site. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click out of this menu. I'm going to come straight up to my Align Dimension tool and click on that. And I'm going to select this face. And if you see, if I just hover along this corner, I can also select this face. And I'm going to drag this one out. And you'll see because I used my Align Dimension tool, the dimension is already hardlined and appearing in black. So I'm just going to select it again and come up to my label and add parameter for spine width as well. Now because this is an L-shaped spine, I want to make sure that this area flexes as well. So I need to make sure I add that parameter to this other piece of the L. So I'm going to come back up to my line dimension tool, select this face, hover over on this edge again until my outside face appears. And I'm going to drag out once again. Because I want these parameters to be the same for this L-shaped spine, I'm just going to click on my hard-coded dimension, come up here to label, and I'm going to give it spine width. I'm not going to create a new parameter because I want both widths of this L-shaped spine to be tied to each other. Now let's come back up to our properties panel and flex our spine width. I'm going to change that to 100 feet and click apply. I'm going to move my menu. And you can see just how easily I can begin to allow that circulation component of this massing to begin to grow. I'm going to change that back to 60. I'll click OK. The last thing we're going to want to do in this video as we're preparing this massing to come back into the project environment is to join the forms. So I'm going to come up here to join on my geometry panel. I'm going to click that. First thing I'm going to click is my spine and then I'm going to click unit A that I want to join. I'm going to have to repeat this process join geometry joins two forms at a time so now you'll see when I hover in this area my unit A and my spine are combined but unit B C and D are still separate massings so let's continue to join the others I'm gonna select unit B and the spine I'll come back up here select unit C and the spine 
I'm going to come back up to join, select unit D in the spine. At this point, to verify that your massings are all joined together, if I just tab through at any intersection, you'll begin to see that where the forms intersect, you no longer have line work. So for example, where my unit A and the spine intersect, or B, C, and D, you'll see that the lines have now been cut away so that there's one continuous envelope to this massing. Hope this video has been helpful.